Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. This video is going to cover an update to my videos that I created that talks you through the, the building of a, a risk management dashboard. So someone's left a comment on one of the YouTube videos and, and asked if it was possible to update this risk manage, uh, risk, this risk matrix here so that if somebody clicked on one of these blank spaces here, it it displayed a blank, a list of blank work orders there. So at the, at the moment, if you click on one of these areas which is, is not displaying any any work orders or any risks, then um, it, it just displays everything because there's not a filter here. However, if you click on one of these, then this will display one or two or three or five or, or, or whatever it is. So I'm gonna talk you through how you can solve this. Okay, so let's crack on. So I've taken a, a duplicate of this um, this page here, and I've um, I've copied this risk matrix, and then I've converted it to a table by just pressing the table button here. And here we can see that we've got the list of post mitigation severity likelihood numbers along the left hand side here, with the corresponding work order count. Now, as we get towards the bottom here, we can see that. Area 44, which is just an area, which represents this um, post mitigation likelihood um, number here. There are no work orders that fall into that um, that category. Okay, so that's the crux of the issue. Is we need to have a th this is the filter that's been applied to this this table here. So if I click on here, those seven work orders are being applied because they've got this value assigned, this 42 assigned to them. Okay, so we need to force there to be a value in here for each one of these post mitigation likelihood um, numbers. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import a table that has got a, a an, has got a field for every one, a column that's got a, a value for every possible combination of post mitigation likelihood severity numbers. And it's similar to what we did with the um, with the other approaches for the, the risk groups and the risk ranking. So we just go and um, get that data there. Okay, so we can see we've got this list here and that is every combination of the, the mitigation and the post mitigation and severity. So there's each of the values there, each of those coordinates there. So we'll load that in, we don't need any transformation there. Right, so that's the first thing. Next, we're gonna go and create a relationship between that severity likelihood and the post mitigation severity likelihood here. Okay, so there's a one to many relationship, that's exactly what we want. It's in here once and it's in this table multiple times, which is great. Next we're gonna go and I'm gonna and I'm gonna do it on this table on this table here so we can kind of see it all happening. So next we're gonna go in here and I'm gonna replace this post mitigation likelihood value which is currently from the, the work order data table with the post mitigation severity or the severity likelihood value from this um, this table that we've just added that's got a complete list of those values. Okay, so that has got a complete list of values now. It still doesn't show us what we need. However, what we do need to do is go in here now and show items with no data. Okay, so we've got to force it to show items with no data. Okay, so great. Now we've got all of these items here that are number 35, which has got zero. We've got number 44, which has got zero, 45, and have we got 55? Yeah, here's here, 55. Okay, so they've now, they're now displayed. However, that doesn't solve our problem completely when it comes to this matrix here. The next thing we've got to do is we've got to force it to show a value in this box here that allows us to click on that value and then filter the corresponding values here. So just to show you how that works, if I go back into this matrix here and I go and also update this category here to be post mitigation. Okay. We're still not able to click on here, okay, because it's only shown of it's only allowing us to select that that um, that square if there's a corresponding measure. So let's go and solve that one. So to do that, we need to go and create um, a copy of the 
the measure, which is work order count current week. It is here. And I'm going to go and use that same measure, but I'm going to force it to display a zero. Okay, now to do that is dead straightforward. So that equals the work order count or w, w count current week plus zero. Okay, so if we put a plus zero at the end, all it does is if it's one, it'll be one plus zero, which is one. But if it's zero, it'll if it's blank, it'll be blank plus zero, which is zero. Okay, so there's a difference between a blank and a zero in this instance here. So let's pull it into our, our table here. Um, add that in here. And we can see we've got zero values here rather than blanks. Okay, so let's also pull that into the this matrix here. Okay, so we can see that for each one of these we've got a zero. Now if you click on here, it's displaying something here. So let's get rid of this. Yeah, that's done its purpose now. So we can remove this. Now I've clicked on here and it's showing zero, but I've clicked on here and it's actually showing a value of one. Okay, so what is the issue here? Okay, so why is it that I click on here and it's showing zero here, but it is actually, fil when I press the filter here, um, the cross filter is, is displaying one value here. Well, it's all to do with this filter that I've put on this, um, this date here, or this table here. So within the current week work order count, what I'm doing is I am looking to find the latest week year. Okay, so I'm looking through all of the work order data and then I'm going to find in the, the, the most recent week year. Okay, now if I go and just um, quickly show you that, essentially if I just um, sort this descending, so it's going to look through and it's going to find this week 20, week 49, 2020. Okay, that's a week, that's the most recent, recent weekly week year. And then it's going to calculate the number of work orders that correspond to that week year for that particular, in that filter context, which would be 55, and which would be zero, because it'd be zero work orders with a, a week year of 49, I think it was. Yeah, 49. So if I go and just show you this very, very quickly, just worth getting it done. Uh, okay, so there is no 40, um, 55 here, so that's why it's returned as zero. The count is zero, but forcing it to be zero. So, however, when I click on here, what's happening is the cross filter on here isn't zero, it's 55. And this filter, how it works, is it's going to go through and it's going to find the top end, top one, by latest. Um, year week, so it's going to find the the latest year week for this particular um, filter context, which is 55. Now, if I go and find the latest one for 55, so I need to take that off, clear the filter, and then we'll go and filter it on 55. And then we'll find the, the most the latest one here, which is going to be week 31, and there's a count of one here. Okay, this work order here, which is 3665, um, 3663573. And that should be the one that's there. Yeah, is it here? Okay, so what it's done is it's not looking through the whole table, it's just looking through a pre-filtered um list of those work orders which have got 55 because that's the filter that's been applied in the cross filter to this particular table and it's choosing the most recent or the the, the maximum um week year number or week, uh, yeah week year number for that sub selection okay so hopefully uh, or that that filtered 55 selection so hopefully that makes a bit of sense um so what we need to do is change the filter on here so to do that I'm going to go and create a new calculated column in this work order data. Um, so I'm going to create a new column. And this column is going to go and just identify if the week number is the most recent week number. Okay. 
So to do that, I'm just going to copy and paste it in here from what I did before. Make it slightly bigger. So this is going to be a calculated column. And it's going to be almost like a flag. In fact, it is going to be a flag, a true false flag. So it's going to go and say um, date of latest week year. So it's going to go and carry out this calculation here. It's going to filter all of the work order data and basically get this the, the most the latest year, the latest week year number, which is going to be that 2020 week 49. Okay, so that's going to be the same as um, we use in the the the, um, the measure for counting the number of work orders in the current week. And then it's going to go and look through and um, filter through all of the values in the table um, and apply this if statement because it's a calculated column, so it's, a, it's, a, it's got a vote context for every single row in the um, in the work order table. And it's going to say if the week year is the most recent one that we've calculated here, then true, otherwise false. Okay. So let's just take a look at that. Okay, so we can see here that none of these are true because none of these are that week 49. So let's go and choose a different one. Uh, this one here, which is 40 or 54, likelihood severity 54. So let's go and filter on 54. And we can see there's loads of loads of have got 54 there. And we can see there's trues here. Now, if we go and just look at the true, we can see that only those that have got a current week, which is 2020 week 49, have been marked with that true flag. So once we've got that, we can go back in here and we can change this filter here to be is latest week um, is true. We can get rid of this one. And that will sort that out. So it basically means that it has to be um, it has to be the most it has to be that it's essentially what we're doing is saying it's um, it has to the count for the cross filter of likelihood severity equals fifty four, and also we've got a visual filter on here that says, and also it has to be the most recent week, which week number. Um, which is, is a, the filter that's been applied to here through that calculated column. So, yeah, there's a couple of things to think about here, but in the end, we've got this um, this layout. The only thing is, I guess, you've got a zero here that does look a little bit unsightly, but at least it's a, a positive a positive statement that says there are zero falls into that um, particular category. And here we can see that this is um, this is working working fine. Okay, so that's how we sort out that issue whereby there was um, a potentially confusing confusion where you clicked on a value that had um, it was blank but kept this filter on here and it showed all the values in the in the detailed in the detailed table okay so while I was in looking at this dashboard I also found another issue which um, I'm not sure why I missed this when I was originally putting this course together and creating this dashboard but what we've got here is we've got a, an error message here instead of um, displaying one of these symbols are, are, are not displaying a symbol if everything's fine. So um, basically the work order data text overall risk status text part two symbol cannot convert the value none of a type text to a type number. Okay so let's go and look at this in a bit more detail. So if we go into the logic behind this um, the, the generation of this symbol and I'm not going to go into it in too much detail because it's all covered in the course. But essentially what we're trying to do here is um, determine whether we show no symbol or we show that red X if it doesn't meet certain criteria. And the criteria um, are normally comparing some text with some text. If it's none, then that's fine. Um, however, this second criteria here, if the overall risk status equals red hyphen critical and the value here now this value is going to return a number of work orders um, typically if there is any work orders um, is not equal to the work order count for high risk so we're comparing two values here okay now if this is none um, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to convert this value converts a, a text number so a number that's in a text format like one two three four that's got brackets around it into an actual number that can then be compared with the output of this measure 
with this not equal sign. However, if the num if the, the, the text is none, that can't be converted into an actual number. Okay. So that's where the issue has um, is is arised. So let's go and we'll look at a solution for this, which is dead straightforward. Okay, so I've just pasted in uh, another variable here. So the text and the ORST2, so it's basically overall risk status text part two, converts the text none into a number zero to allow the and statement in the switch statement below to compare a number with a number. Okay, so basically what we're going to do here is we're going to create a variable and if the text overall risk state, status text part two equals none, then we're going to force it to be zero. Otherwise, we're going to leave it as it is, which will return a number, which can then be converted using this value to um, to an actual number that can be compared in this statement here. Um, so if that's the case, what we need to do now is then go in and just update each one of these here so that it is text. There we go. Is that available? Okay, so now we've got that logic here. If it's going to be a, um, it's going to be none. We're going to make it zero. Otherwise, we're going to leave it as the, the number that it will that um, that text over a list state status text part two will return a number normally. And then we put it in here, and we can see that this is now working. So it, because it returns because none of the work orders or none of these defects are scheduled for repair in the next seven days, it's basically returned this none. And then that none has now been able to be converted into a zero, which is then converted into one of these um, crosses here. So that's going to solve that issue there. Okay, so a couple of um, updates to this dashboard just to clarify a few errors and a few um, bits of extra functionality. So hopefully you found that useful. And I will, if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, then hit the subscribe button. If you want to see how this dashboard was built, and if you're just watching this video and thinking, what is this all about? Then check the link below where I will um, I'll show you where, where the course is where you can actually see how this dashboard is built. Apart from that, thanks again for listening and I'll talk to you in the next video.